All right then, gang. In this lesson, I want to talk about something called MCP and MCP servers, which can give Cloud Code the ability to connect and communicate with external data sources, services, and APIs. For example, when I'm working with Cloud in this project right now, it knows about my project and it can use all its built-in tools to make changes and run bash commands and whatnot. But those tools only extend to the scope of this code base, right? And there's no tools for Cloud Code to interact with external data sources, third-party services, or APIs. I can't tell it, for example, to reach out to a database to analyze my tables or even create a new one for me because it doesn't have the tools to do that. But that's where MCP servers come into play. So just very briefly, MCP stands for Model Context Protocol. It was designed by Anthropic, who made Cloud Code, and it defines a way that AI models can interact with external sources. And we do this by providing them with additional tools and context through MCP servers. And different MCP servers come with different tools to do different things and interact with different sources. So you can think of an MCP server as something you can essentially plug into Cloud Code or whatever client you're using, and then Cloud directed by the AI model can use whatever tools the server provides to interact with some external data source. For example, the Superbase MCP server contains tools to do things like list tables, deploy edge functions, and even execute SQL commands. So if I installed the Superbase MCP server, Claude would have access to all those tools, and I could say to Claude Code, read the blogs table in Superbase, make an interface to model the records. And in response, Claude would check for any tools it can use to do this, and it would find one in this Superbase MCP server. It would then use that tool, which is just a function defined within the server, to reach out to the database and find the blogs table. It would read it and then return the format of that table to Claude Code, and then using that data, Claude Code could decide how to make the interface. So when we use MCP servers, it's not the AI itself or the client like Claude code that reaches out directly to these external sources. It's the MCP server that does that and then it provides Claude code or whatever client you might be using with the ability to call and use those tools. Another MCP server called Playwright provides AI models with the tools to open a browser, navigate through web pages, inspect elements, take screenshots. The Context 7 MCP server provides tools to get up-to-date documentation from a lot of frameworks and libraries, which you can then ask Claude Code to use when implementing new features using those frameworks or libraries. And there's loads more too, which you can find on websites like this one, pulsemcp.com, so definitely check that out. We're going to install these two servers right here, Context 7 and Playwright. And over the next couple of lessons, we're going to put them to use in our workflow. First though, how do we actually add the servers? Well, if we take a look at the Claude Code docs on the MCP installation section, you can see that we can add them locally on our computer or by connecting to them remotely. Now, we'll be adding the servers locally, so we'll be using this option at the top. And the way we do this is by using the command Claude MCP add, and then whatever the server name is, then the command and any arguments. Also, if you're on Windows, then you're currently, you'll need to add one more thing, which if we scroll down here, you're gonna see in a big yellow warning box, and that is, to add cmd and then forward slash c. So the cmd part opens the Windows command line to run the command. The forward slash c part makes sure the shell gets closed after it's been run. Now normally when we use an MCP server, the server docs gives us the whole string to copy and paste in a terminal, which is then gonna add the server. But just be aware that you might need to add the cmd forward slash c part if you're on Windows for servers that use NPX. Otherwise it might not work correctly. Anyway, let's head back to the Context 7 MCP page and we're gonna see what it says there about the installation. So if we click on this MCP link up at the top, it should take us to the GitHub page for the server, which it does. And then if you scroll right down, we should eventually see a bunch of options for adding the server to different clients. One of those options should be Claude Code. So click on that to expand it and we're gonna get a few different options. The first two are for remote server connections. The one at the bottom is for a local connection. So we say Claude MCP add, then the server name, which is context seven. Then we have this double dash, then the NPX command. So we're gonna copy this now and paste it into the terminal. And then we're also gonna make a few edits. So then I've pasted this into my terminal already and I'm just gonna add another few things in. The first thing we'll do is we're gonna add another flag to this just before the double dash and that is the scope flag. So when we add MCP servers with Claude Code, we can add them to three different scopes. 
project scope where the MCP setup gets pushed to remotes and everyone working on the project can use the MCPs added to the project. Local scope, which is where only you can use the MCP server on this particular project. And global scope, which is when the MCP is added globally to Claude code and you can use it for any project on your computer. Now the default scope is local, but I want to make it a project scope so that we can see the MCP configuration here in the project directory. And mostly I use either project or global scope. I very rarely use local scope. Anyway, to add this scope, we use the scope flag followed by project to specify project scope. And again, this could also be local or global. Now, before we go any further, I will say this. If you're running Claude code natively on Windows, it can be a little bit buggy when you're adding MCP servers, at least at the time of recording this video. If you're on a Mac, then you probably won't have to jump through any hoops or workarounds and you can just hit enter right now and this would work. If you're on Windows though, you have to do a few more things for it to work properly. First, we have to add the CMD and then forward slash CBIT just before the rest of this NPX command like we talked about earlier. Secondly, if we run this right now, we're going to get an error, which I'll show you by hitting enter. And that error says there's an unknown option Y, which comes right after the NPX bit. Now, the Y flag is for auto accepting defaults to prompts when some package is installed and it needs to be there in this case. So how do we get around this? Well, one solution is to run the whole thing without the Y flag first, which we'll do now. And when we do that, it's going to work and Claude code makes this .mcp.json file in the root of the project. Now, if we take a look at that, we'll see this JSON object with an MCP servers property inside. And it's within this property that all project level servers get added. So we can see this context seven one right here that we just added. And inside that, the server's configured with these different properties. The type is standard in out since this is a local MCP connection that we added. The command is CMD and that's because on Windows, we added that extra CMD part. Then we have some arguments, including the forward slash C bit, which we also added because we're on Windows. Now, again, if you're on a Mac, this will probably look a little bit different and you won't need to make any changes. But on Windows, because we removed that hyphen Y flag, we should now manually add this in to the arguments array after the NPX one. So let's do that now and then save the file. Right then, so hopefully now that's all going to work when we start up Claude code, but I do think this whole workaround when using Windows is a little bit clunky and I'm hoping that it's something that can be made simpler in the future and maybe when you're watching this video, it will be. Anyway, now let's try using this. Now, when I've just tried using this MCP server, I got some kind of connection error. It failed. It didn't work for whatever reason. So I'm actually going to use the remote server from context seven. It's strange because when I tried this out before recording, it did work. Everything was fine. Uh, but this is the problem sometimes because Claude code is new. MCP servers are new. They're changing a lot. Sometimes things can just not work and it might take a little while for things to level out. So what I'm going to do now is go back to the docs and look for the other command I need to run for a remote server. So we're going to go ahead with this one right here, which uses HTTP as the transport system. So let's copy this. All right, so I've pasted that into my terminal, but I'm going to add one more thing, and that is the scope flag after the server name. So after context seven, do double dash, then scope, and then project to add this at a project level, press enter. Hopefully now it's going to add that server for us. And if we close this terminal and take a look over here, we should see the mcp.json file. And yet we see that context seven property inside. This time the type is HTTP because we're using a remote connection. And this is the URL for the server as well. Cool. So now we need to start Claude back up, which I'm going to do over here by typing Claude and then press enter. Let's get rid of the file tree. And then inside here, I'm going to say forward slash MCP. And this time, hopefully, we will see the context seven. Okay, it failed to connect. What I'm going to do is press enter. And then I'm going to reconnect to this to see if it does connect this time. Okay, looks like it's worked. So forward slash MCP. Now we can see a green tick next to that. We're connected to context seven and we can start using it. So let me escape out of that. Okay, so now I'm going to get Claude Code to use context seven by typing in this prompt. And it says, can you check the latest Tailwind docs to see if the theme variables are correctly configured in the global CSS file? Use context seven. I'm also going to reference that CSS file so it knows where to look. So that's source app and then globals.css. 
and then I'm going to press enter. But before I do that, notice I said use context seven. That's so it explicitly knows to use that MCP server to get the up-to-date information. So let me press enter to do this. And now it wants to use this resolve library ID tool from context seven. And then it wants to use an additional tool and it wants my permission to do this. So I'm going to press yes right here. And now you can see right here, it says, looking at your Tailwind CSS configuration, your theme variables are correctly configured, blah, de, blah, de, blah. It's properly structured. Okay, so everything is as it should be, awesome. So one thing I like to do with Context 7 is tell Claude Code to use it whenever it needs to implement some feature using a third party framework or library because a lot of the time it can use legacy code. So I wanna make sure that it uses the up-to-date documentation every time that it creates some code using those frameworks. And that's not just Claude Code, by the way, that's any AI tool or model. They can all use legacy code because they're trained on that legacy code. So what I'm gonna do is add a memory using the hash over here. So if I press hash, we're gonna add a memory and then I'm gonna paste in this memory that says use context seven to check up-to-date docs when needed for implementing new libraries or frameworks or adding features using them. So if I press enter, we're gonna add that to the project memory. And if we then open this file up, we should see that at the bottom now. Yep, there it is, awesome. Okay then, so now we're gonna add another server called Playwright, which provides Claude code with the tools to do things like open a browser, click on links, take screenshots, etc. So I'm on the Playwright MCP page right here and for Claude code, it says run this command, which because we're on Windows, we're gonna have to tweak again. I also wanna make sure we're using project scope when we add it. So copy this command, then head back to your terminal. So then I've already added this command in as well as two other things. The scope flag, first of all, over here to say we want to add this at project level. And then also the CMD forward slash C part because we're running this on Windows. This time we don't need to add the Y flag for this particular server. All right, so now let's hit enter. Hopefully that's going to add the playwright server to the mcp.json file. So let's take a look at that over here. And yet we can see we've got the context seven one now and also the playwright one. And this time the type is standard in out, the command CMD, then the arguments down here. Awesome. So then now we need to start Claude back up again so that we can try using this. Okay, so I've started Claude up and the first thing I'm gonna do is use the MCP tool to make sure that they're connected correctly. Yep, okay, cool. And now I'm gonna escape and I'm just gonna ask Claude Code to maybe open a browser and navigate to netninja.dev and give me a summary of the site. So this is just to show you that it can navigate to a site using Playwright or Playwright can on its behalf and provide feedback that we need. So it's gonna ask for permission first of all. So we'll say yes. And then on my other screen, it's opened up netninja.dev, which we can see right here. So it's just gonna do its browsing. I'm gonna take that back off screen. All right, so now it's come back with a little bit of information. It says NetNinja is a comprehensive coding education platform created by Sean, focused on web development training. The site positions itself as a coding dojo where aspiring developers become coding ninjas. So I'm quite pleased with that. It gives us this other information about it as well, which is quite extensive to be honest. But Playwright can do more than just this. And what I'd like to do is use Playwright to give us feedback on the UX of components that we make when it views them in the browser. So in the next lesson, what we're gonna be doing is making our own subagent with Claude Code, and we're gonna be using the Playwright MCP from within that subagent to do just that.